just before Christmas, we saw the release of Dark Table 5. It comes with a bunch of new goodies, and we're halfway through checking all of that out. Let's go. Hi and welcome to episode 151 of Understanding Dark Table. We are picking up where we left off halfway through the video, so let's get back to it. The first time a new user presses tab, they'll be warned that this will hide all panels and how to get them back. Hopefully this prevents some confusion or frustration. Now, unfortunately I've already done it in my installation of Dark Table 5, so I can't show you that pop-up text, but believe me, it does happen. Drag and drop utility module headers to reposition them across the left and right panels in the light table, as well as vertically, all views. Each view can have a different layout. Drag and drop of processing modules in the darkroom right panel, in other words the processing modules panel, has been improved to auto scroll when reaching the top or bottom and to not get confused when images get dragged into the area. This functionality no longer requires control shift modifiers. I've got to say we are opening a massive can of worms here. I can see a bunch of new users coming in and repositioning the order of modules and then not being happy with the quality of the exported images and it'll all be because they've messed with the order of the pixel pipe. Please, if you are a new user, do not go adjusting the order of the modules in the darkroom right-hand side panel unless you really understand what you are doing. This has always been hidden for a good reason, and I've got to say I'm a little dubious about the decision to remove that requirement for reordering the modules. Improved the message displayed at startup when the database is locked by another instance of Darktable. To be honest, I've never actually read all of the text that was on that particular pop-up message, so I'll believe that it has changed, but it, it still looks the same at first glance. Replace the icon of the operator button in the color label filter for working with multiple selected color labels, union and intersection. Okay, so let's suppose I chose all of the images from Dunsborough, which is just that selection there for the moment. Go F1 to apply a red label. And then let's suppose I just select the images for this panoramic sequence and I go F2 to give them an orange label and then I deselect. Now if I filter by red, I will get all of those images. If I then choose the orange label as well, by default I'm getting the intersection, images having all selected color labels. But if I click on this icon, I now get union, images with at least one of the selected color labels. Other changes, the first of which is that the default histogram view is now waveform display, not histogram. So by default, the histogram will now display in waveform view, but you can also choose vector scope, parade, or as I prefer, histogram. It's just what I'm familiar with. In the selected images module, the copy parts option now defaults to not selecting any of the parts within your current history stack. I love this. So if I was to go to the history stack and do selective copy, this no longer includes any pre-selected items. I love that. It should have always been that way, but thankfully it is now. So now if I just wanted to copy lens correction, I could do that, select the rest of the images in that sequence, and then paste and append, and that will then add that lens correction to those other images. 
The ability to remove custom places from the import dialog has been made a lot easier with the addition of the plus and minus buttons up there at the top right hand side of the places section of the window. In Darkroom, added an action and the default binding is Control X for synchronizing the last edited module on the current image to copy that to multiple images as selected via the film strip. So let's suppose on the first of these images that make up this panorama, I was to go and do something crazy like a hue shift like so. Because that is the last operation I did, I can now select all of those images in the film strip and go control X and that will copy that last module operation to all of the selected images in the film strip. Also introduce control Z to undo multiple film strip edits in the darkroom view. So if we wanted to undo that change, we can now just press control Z and the change to those multiple images will be undone. In the tagging module, you can now right click to copy a tag to the clipboard and this includes hierarchical tags so that's pretty cool so if we go to the tagging module this sequence for this panorama is tagged with Australia Western Australia and something else that we can't completely read we can right click and go copy to clipboard and if I then open up a text editor we can see that entire hierarchical tag Australia pipe Western Australia, Pipe, Dunsborough, Pipe, Bunker Bay. There's a couple of new substitution variables like image.tags.hierarchy and we could use this at export. I mean, there's multiple places you could use it, but let's suppose we wanted to send this image to the desktop and instead of using file name, we will use image.tags.hierarchy and we export and then if we have a look at our desktop, we've got a JPEG that has a file name that represents all of the tags. So Australia pipe, Western Australia pipe, Dunsborough pipe, Bunker Bay, comma, panorama pipe, pano source. The second new substitution variable is image.id.next. Every image that you import into Darktable gets an image ID. So in this instance, we can see that this first image of that panoramic sequence is image ID 115,133. So that's how many images I've imported into Darktable over the years I've been using it. So if we wanted to, we could have whatever that image ID number is going to be when we are importing new images, we could have that number included in the file name if you are the type of person who likes to rename their files as you import them. So what we could do is copy that to the clipboard, come back to our import module, and here where I have keep original file name, you could uncheck that and you could put into that field the image ID next variable to include that image ID number in the renamed image file. There's also some other new substitution variables like exif.flash, exif.metering, etc, etc. A couple of other things, I've noticed that the thumbnails in the light table view now default to a common height. They used to default to a common width so that your 16 by 9 aspect ratio images would appear less high but the same width as a 4x3 image. Now it's a common height rather than a common width. Also when you are in the darkroom view the default behavior for moving in the film strip has changed. It used to be a single click but now it requires a double click to move to another image. Heaps of bug fixes, uh, some new camera models that are supported, some new white balance presets, some new noise profiles, and a bunch of cameras that are now no longer supported because there are no sample images available on raw.pixels.us. 
All righty. So that's a quick summary of some of the new stuff in Darktable 5.0. Got to say, loving a lot of it. Since we last spoke, Kath and I have been to Western Australia. The intention there was for me to catch up with members of my family that I had not seen for two and a half, three years. And of course, Murphy's Law, we both got COVID and I wasn't able to catch up with everybody that I wanted to catch up with, which was very frustrating indeed. Uh, you might have noticed the croaky voice in episode 149, and I'm probably still not fully recovered now. Frustrating beyond belief, but anyway... Again, it is what it is. Can't change it. Just got to move on. It was nice to get out with the camera, though. Nice to do a bit of shooting. The image you saw of the tumbleweed on the beach uh, at the beginning of this video, that's probably my favourite image from the, uh, the whole 10 days I was in Western Australia. Although, I did spend an afternoon up in the sand dunes at sundown, which uh, I haven't got around to processing those images yet, but I know I got some absolutely cracking images in there as well so yeah expect uh, expect to see some of those images in forthcoming videos also you will remember that i inherited my dad's fair lane when my dad died a couple of years ago and it was my intention to hang on to that car but frustratingly it was you know i mean it was an old car it had done three hundred thousand kilometers which is about two two hundred thousand miles and there was just so many things that needed doing on it and I didn't have the skills to do them myself and it was costing me an absolute fortune to keep that car running. So sadly, I let it go just before Christmas. I sold it, horribly disappointed with the amount of money I got for it because I know that 15, 20 years from now, anyone who's still got one of that particular model of car is going to be asking six figures for it, you know. Um, but I had to be realistic. It was just more than I could handle to keep it going. So I had a good chat with Kath and I said, look, you know, if I've got to let this go, I need to buy something that I'm going to enjoy driving just as much. So I have done the, um, you, you, you can apply all the cliches to me that you see fit to apply uh, about midlife crises and the like, but I've bought myself a 2017 Mustang GT. Uh, I take delivery of that next weekend, which is about eight days from now. So yeah, looking forward to that hugely. I will more than likely take some photos of that and they will probably appear in forthcoming videos as well. Alrighty, I think that is everything. Uh, I hope you're enjoying Dark Table 5. You know, presumably you've had a couple of weeks to play with it now already. Uh, but if you haven't, if you're just discovering it, well, welcome aboard. Uh, and, you know, please feel free to check out some of my past videos for more in depth information about what you can do in Dark Table. Questions, comments, feedback, sing out down below, and I'll catch you in the next one.